Hi there, Sandy McIver here. Today I'm sharing a card created with the Hero Arts Color Layering Iris and Dyes, and we're also going to create the frame with the Simon Says Stamps Stitched Rectangle Wafer Dyes. We're going to be using the outline stamps in the set along with the coordinating dies, and I'm going to be black embossing onto a piece of watercolor paper for today's project. I used my anti-static pouch on the paper first, then I stamped with my Versamark ink pad. I'm covering it with the white or the black embossing powder, and uh, then I'm heat embossing. And then I'm going back and I'm doing two leaves and one stem, and the same steps. Black embossing powder, shake off the excess, and heat set. I'm going to watercolor today with my Ganzia Tambi, and I've done a little legend here for myself so I know which colors I'm going to be playing with. I'm going to do one section at a time and you'll see how I'm adding water and then I'm coming and adding watered down purple to the bottom of the iris portion and then I'm coming near the top and adding the blue and because I wet the entire thing it's going to blend together and create a beautiful color without any division they're just going to kind of blend into each other so I don't like working on two petals that are side by side because I don't want the ink to run and so I've gone down to the bottom and I'm doing the same thing. I wet the petal first. I've added some purple and now I'm adding in a little bit of blue. And you'll see me go back and forth a few times with the petals. As it starts to dry, sometimes you get little white spots that show up, especially around the edge. And I'm just going back and fixing those. And one of the reasons this I like to emboss is it also helps to keep my water where I want it so it doesn't blend into the other colors. And basically I'm going around and I'm doing a petal at a time until I get the whole main part of the flower done and uh, as you can see I'm using blue and purple kind of my favorite color of irises uh, and then again I'm coming back in and fixing a couple of the little white spots so um, you want to clean your water quite often with this as well especially before you flip over to the yellow which we will be doing shortly uh, but just work your way around. Now you see I got a whole bunch of water and uh, paint on there. I'm drying my paintbrush off and I'm wicking up some of that water so that it's not quite so soggy because it's going to leave a mark. So you can do that with your paintbrush as well. And so for the last petal, here we are adding the purple and I'm going to come back in and do the blue. And I am cleaning my paintbrush on the paper towel in between each one of these. There we go. And I still have that center one at the top to do. So I'm hoping that those two outside ones are dry enough. There we go, adding the purple. And again, I have a little bit of a pool of water there. So I do come back and pick that up eventually and add a little bit of purple in there. And you don't want to move it around too much because then you'll just blend it together and you'll end up with one dark purple. Uh, you won't get the nice variegation in the colors. So I'm making some green right now and I'm going to go over and do my stems and leaves and I'm letting the flower dry a little bit because I need to add some pink and yellow to it and I don't want it to run into my purple. And so for these colors, I'm using 56 and 53 and I'm also providing a free PDF on my blog that you can flip over to and download and it will give you all the colors that I used for today's project along with all the cutting instructions. And so see I'm adding a little bit of paint here and it was a little on the dry side because I forgot to wet my leaf. You can go back and do it afterwards and try and do it with a clean brush so that you're not muddying up your colors too much. And I do want them wet because I want them to blend together. And so I'm finished with that. I'm going back to my yellow and I'm adding the yellow to the center of my flowers. And I already had that in my little trough here. I moved all the colors before I started the video just in case you're wondering what I'm up to. And now I have some pink and that was the next, and see how it ran there? That's what happens when it's still wet. And that's all right, I don't mind that color bleeding in a little bit. I'm actually adding it a little bit down the bottom too so that it kind of blends with the whole flower. And I found a couple more white spots, so I'm going back and fixing those. And there we go. I think I'm kind of happy with this iris. You could actually play with these for quite a long time. I'm going to set my flowers and leaves aside to dry, and so in the meantime, I'm going to cut my frame. And you'll see I'm using the second and the third largest of the dies, placing them together, making sure I have an equal distance between the two, cutting them. And I'm going to get my frame, but I'm also going to get a couple of pieces that I can use later in a different project. 
And now that my flowers and leaves are dry, I'm using the coordinating dies to cut them. And I'm doing two at a time. I did the flower and one leaf, and then I'm going to come back and do the leaf and the stem as my second run through. Nice and easy. These are also pretty easy to uh, just fussy cut out if you don't happen to have the dies. I know the Hero Art sells them separately or together as a set, which is kind of awesome. Now we're going to create the background for my art piece and I'm using my frame and I'm laying it over top of my four by five and a quarter card front and I'm making little pencil marks so that I know where to put the Distress Oxide inks. You don't want to go all the way to the edge where it's going to show on the other side of your frame. And so I'm just using my uh, little blending tool and I'm adding some purple and this is Wilted Violet. And I'm using a light hand in a circular motion, and then I do go back and forth a little bit just to even it out. It doesn't need to be perfect because, of course, we're stamping a sentiment, and we're also going to put the flowers over top. So don't kill yourself trying to get it easy. I'm going to use my Bursafine Oxide Black and stamp the sentiment. It's, uh, there's quite a few that come in the set, so there's lots to choose from. Time to put the card together. I'm starting with the card front, and I'm using my Permanent Extreme Tombow to add it to the card base and giving it a good push to make sure it's down there. I have cut some strips of foam tape for the back of my frame and I'm going to center that on my card front next. And I also have dimensionals on the back of all my flower pieces. So I'm starting with a stem, then I'm adding the flower and I'm tucking the bottoms in underneath the frame. So you'll see that I'm adding the two leaves and I'm done. So here's a couple of different ways you can layer your card. You'll see the center one I used in amethyst cardstock for my background. And I, as I said, I shared a PDF on my blog and a list of the products that I used. And the link is underneath my video. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And thanks so much for watching. Until next time, toodles!